Okay, everyone. I, as you know, I am claim I know a lot about electrons, and they are dipoles. Now, I've been searching around for who's claiming what, and uh, this is um, what they're going to be talking about. And he claims that they have measured a whole bunch of things. Let's just see. The previous ones, because today I want to discuss the structure of the electron. Since J.J. Thomson demonstrated the electron's existence in 1897, scientists have measured many of its properties, like its charge, mass, dimensions, magnetic dipole moment, and spin. Okay. I'd like to see if I agree with these things. But we'll look at that in depth in a moment. Okay, this appears pretty good now. This There was a model discussed in 1997. And um, here's what they have to say. For the electron that was proposed by John Graham Williamson and Martin van der Mark in 1997. In that year they wrote a paper with the title Is the electron a photon with toroidal topology? As you can see, the title is formulated as a question rather than a firm statement, which I think represents the inquisitive nature of the paper. When it was published, it received the usual polite silence, which is... They all received silence, you know, until they, they... They just never... This goes back to 1997. That's 25 years ago, more than that, almost 30. I think it's quite common for papers that challenge the mainstream scientific perspective. But I think it's still worthwhile to discuss it here, because to me personally, it offered some interesting views on the properties of the electron. Let's listen to what John Williamson said when asked about the origin of the theory that he developed with van der Mark. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't believe his theory, but let's look, listen to it. We worked in energy physics in Switzerland to see if we could analyze and learn about how stuff worked. Take electron and positron, put them together. All right, he's saying take an electron and a positron. Well, what's a positron? I know what an electron is. They're dipole electrons. There's a black and a white. But when you put those together, they don't annihilate each other. They just glue together and turn into what they call a gluon. So he's saying you take an electron and a positron, put them together, and what happens? Together. And they annihilate to give pure energy in the form of light. And what the That's not true. That's just not, I don't, not in my model. Inspiration was was maybe 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 these particles are made of light. Particles are made of. I, I mean, light is the particle. Light is the particles. They're the smallest particles that I know of that exist, and they're the black and the white together, and they're always found together. They're not found separate. The only way you can separate them is to really bang them like we did through a venturi or head-on particle colliders. But yes, light is those particles. They don't annihilate each other. They coexist with each other. Okay, so this will be the main question that I'm going to discuss. What if particles are actually made of light? Okay, let's discuss. I want to just say, this is a profound statement. What if particles are actually made of light. Well, what are particles? Particles are everything there is. This is nothing more than a bunch of particles put together and arranged in a certain way. All Everything you see here is nothing but particles in, in, in masses. And the particles start out as dipole electrons. And if you could explode them into every little bit and piece there was, that's all you would have is with dipole electrons. They'd be going everywhere. And that's what that's what nuclear energy is, basically. It's just splitting all the particles and having them take up their own zones. And it just... So, everything is made of light, yes. All right, don't forget, I started with particles that were the smallest of all of these particles. Not these huge things like they started with at CERN and Fermi Lab. And they're going down to the same, what we did now. They're starting to use the high luminosity, which is this. That's about as high a luminosity as you're ever going to get anywhere. And it results in the muon neutrinos, electron neutrinos, exactly what they've been looking to get. 
And now finally they're starting to go this route and to use the sea moss and basically all the things that we've been doing since 2013, 2014, somewhere in that area. And again, I reported all this stuff. I, I was a little, well, I'm still upset about it. Why, why wouldn't this be looked at? I would think that that would be the job of Fermi Lab and CERN and all of them, taking gigantic amounts of money. And, uh, you know, I was a little concerned. You know, in my opinion, John, um, uh, Don Lincoln didn't do his job. That's my opinion. Now, if he had missed this, I can't imagine. And if they have somebody in charge of this whole thing and they miss this, knowing that these particles are, well, thinking maybe possibly light is these particles, which it is, there should have been a question, but there was no question. It's not one single question from anybody about this. So that's why I get upset. You should do. You're spending billions and trillions by now for sure. You know, that they didn't need to, they might have been able to use this for some good. And when I say good, if you could jump right in there and harvest that energy right at that point, I think you're golden. I, I'm huge amounts of energy right there. And they show it in their graphs. It's not like it's hidden. Okay, my friends, this is what I would say. I can't see any reason we can't have these lasers shooting into a venturi and right on the other side where all the white gets separated, we harvest that and push it down into a photodiode, which means it can go down, but it can't come back. It's like a gate. It goes in and then you store it or use it, whatever you do. Tap a little bit back off, keep the laser running, and you just got free energy. If that would work, that would be kind of fabulous. And this is what... It, generating energy is all about is ripping the electrons off of the muons. When the electrons sit on their own, they weigh virtually nothing. A car which has a thousand pound battery, one thousand pounds, can run all day long, drive say 500 miles, and it still weighs a thousand pounds. Exact, basically exactly. You fill that back up with electricity and it still weighs a thousand pounds. The white has no weight, no weight whatsoever. And we can, I, I don't see any reason that we can't take that white and harvest it to walk around with this. No grids, no nothing. And I would like to see it at least looked at because this, is, this could not harm you. These things get back together almost instantaneously, so you don't have any big energetic fields going on. You, you're going to have a little bit of energy inside there, maybe. I don't know how big. Not that, you know, kind of small. And if you can get that white and drag it down and use it, or do whatever you want with it, store it into the batteries, you did, but then have a battery, you have to have something with a lot of mass so that it would become quite heavy. If you didn't have a battery attached to this, you carry that thing around, turn it on, and just give you as much electricity as you want, and you just use it. All right, so, and that would have virtually no weight to speak of. But if you had to have something with batteries in it, you're gonna have to add weight. And like I say, thousand pound battery. <sighs> never gains weight, never loses weight. You drive all day, same thing. So the white has no weight, because that's the energy. That's the part that will go right through you to get the ground. Static, lightning, whatever. All right, we're going to be talking about energies. And we're going to be talking about muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos. And the shower and the energy the electron neutrinos produce when they hit heavy water, basically. So... At this, for us, it's an, uh, a Venturi, which is better, because we focus them in to a tiny little funnel, and at that point, all of their fields crush together, and all we get is the white, and the black backs off. Very similar to what they did at, uh, I believe this is CERN. Okay, so these are the detector banks the detector arrays and they're seeing the white showers and the black balls by themselves. The muon goes 
sterile basically. It comes through and it's a well-defined circular, it doesn't change. These splash all over the place. And this is cherry ink off radiation. Now, we did basically like I just showed you, the same thing only using a Venturi, so I think it's much better. All right, so don't forget, we're talking about cherry ink off radiation. These are the electrons. Now they come through at a very low amount and then they shower. See low energy showers down here and then high energy showers it creates a big cone. Now these are the muons. The muons have an earlier shower. You get a little splash of them here and then they just basically stop. And these just go right off the charts. That's the difference between, base tracks means a number of particles, and these are the number of muons. And they bang and then they just pop back. It's exactly what we found. These are the high energy particles, and that's what they're talking about, high energy radiation hitting, hitting um, heavy water. Well, we don't need that. We funnel them in, in just in the atmosphere, no special, nothing special here. And the black muons backed right off, and the whites went into showers, precisely what they claimed here. The blacks backed off, and the white went into showers. Here it is right here. There's their little diagram of it. The black just makes a pattern, and the white makes the showers. I mean, how much more obvious can it be? There it is. The black backed off, and the white showered, and then the black came back. I'm showing that there, there, there just is no way to, to, to miss this. It's unmissable. Now, what, what does that do to energy? They're talking about high energy showers, high. Down here, there's, uh, you know, there's not many showers here going on, and they're low energy. Up here, they're high energy, large, high energy cones created. Well. When they say high energy, what does that mean? High energy. All right, this time they're coming in from this direction. Now, this is an energy. This is the shower. <clears throat> electron showers. See the E? Electron showers. This is the maximum energy. Now, so they're coming in. There's just no energy to speak of. And then all of a sudden it hits here and you get that little pushback and then the shower goes way up to here which we, we saw. We saw the shower just spread out to everywhere. Now what does that mean as far as the number of electrons? It's, it's, this is here. They come in and there's so many so many and then you see a bunch of them come up and then they go through the accelerator and you get way up to here. That's the number of electrons. That's the energy. It went from here up to here in energy because we went from here up to here in electrons. What we need to do is harvest those electrons here because every electron, which is the white part, the shower part, is, is electricity. The muons you don't want. The muons are not electricity. Muons are, you want to leave behind. And the electricity is what you want to separate, and here it is separated. Okay, my friends, this is what I would say. I can't see any reason we can't have these lasers shooting into a venturi, and right on the other side where all the white gets separated, we harvest that and push it down into a photodiode, which means it can go down, but it can't come back. It's like a gate. It goes in, and then you store it or use it, whatever you do. Tap a little bit back off, keep the laser running, and you just got free energy. If that would work, that would be kind of fabulous. And this is what generating energy is all about, is ripping the electrons off of the muons. When the electrons sit on their own, they weigh virtually nothing. A car, which has a thousand pound battery, 1,000 pounds can run all day long, drive, say, 500 miles, and it still weighs 1,000 pounds. Exactly, basically, exactly. You fill that back up with electricity, and it still weighs 1,000 pounds. The white has no weight, 
no weight whatsoever. And we can, I, I don't see any reason that we can't take that white and harvest it to walk around with this. No grids, no nothing. And I would like to see it at least looked at because this is, this could not harm you. These things get back together almost instantaneously. So you don't have any big energetic fields going on. You, you're going to have a little bit of energy inside there maybe. I don't know how big. Not that, you know, kind of small. And if you can get that white and drag it down and use it, or do whatever you want with it, store it into the batteries, you did, but then have a battery, you have to have something with a lot of mass so that it would become quite heavy. If you didn't have a battery attached to this, you carry that thing around, turn it on, and give you as much electricity as you want, and you just use it. All right, so, and that would have virtually no weight to speak of. But if you had to have something with batteries in it, you're gonna have to add weight. And like I say, 1,000 pound battery, <sighs> never gains weight, never loses weight. You drive all day, same thing. So the white has no weight, because that's the energy. That's the part that will go right through you to get the ground. Static, lightning, whatever.